Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to talk about basic long cycle competition programming. In kettlebells, you have two families or styles of movement. You have hard style movement focused on maximum power output in the shortest period of time. And you have soft style or competition style where you are focusing on pure efficiency. You're trying to become the most efficient person possible while accomplishing the most reps in a set time frame. In soft style or competition kettlebelling, you're focused mostly on efficiency. So the structure of the programming is different. You have to figure out which one you want to focus on. Hard style tends to have better results faster, but the programs tend to be less sustainable. Competition style are longer term programs, programming meant to go from you know one year to 10 years to try and make people the absolute maximum efficient that they can be with cardio and strength integrated together. It's a very unique type of training and almost nothing else does this except maybe single arm heavy club belt training. In a previous video, we had kind of gone over this for snatch and we had two variables. We had time under tension and we had reps per minute. We have the same variables here. Think of long cycle or soft style clean and jerk, which is a push press where you drop underneath the weight in order to try and do as much of the work with your leg as possible. And snatch and long cycle are two of maybe three competition moves that people focus on extremely heavily and get very, very good at. We have the same things here that we had for snatch. We have our time under tension, we have our reps per minute. The difference is the rep count for snatch goes up to about 20 reps per minute. I'm gonna talk about long cycle as maxing out at about 13 reps per minute. That can be different. I'm focusing on that as an idea because that's what my buddy who's a competition marathon kettlebell guy told me. He told me 13 reps per minute is the max that they're doing now now very recently because they're trying to get good fixation which means the rep is slow enough that all the lockouts can be very apparent so it makes it very easy to judge a rep or no rep so we're just going to use that in this idea in our competition training what we're trying to accomplish is one hand change in the amount of time there are other ways to program this but we're talking about a basic way to do this training so let's look at three minutes four minutes five minutes six minutes seven minutes eight minutes nine minutes ten minutes some people will run this longer and then it starts pushing into marathon type of training the point of sticking in the range of three to ten minutes is that because it's a shorter period of time it's easier to take the weight way up if you were to do this for marathoning people tend to use lighter weights because you're going for substantially longer periods of time a half marathon is three times this 30 minutes and a full marathon is six times this so the weights are different our basic competition time frame of trying to get to 10 minutes and then we're using our rate per minute six reps per minute seven reps per minute eight reps per minute nine ten eleven twelve thirteen reps per minute so think of this as a training grid it's a program that once again writes itself you would start by doing three minutes at six reps and then four minutes at six reps five minutes at six reps six minutes at six reps and you would walk your way up if you were to fail and not be able to accomplish the set reps in the amount of time then you would repeat that workout or you would jump to a different program probably a heavier weight for a lower period of time think this giant chart here exists for every weight you want to do this with start light and light is determined on you it could be 6k it could be 12k that's what coaches do is they help you find a starting point easiest thing to do is just start with the lightest weights you can find run the program and go up the smallest increment of weight that you can it used to be 4k jumps now it's 2k jumps now with the competition adjustable kettlebells for a lot of these you can get a 1k jump the more times you repeat this chart the better your outcome is going to be think target goals for men being in the 32k range and for the ladies in the 24k range which is extremely heavy on both sides that would make you stronger and more endurance than anybody you're likely to encounter in your life in general after you completed your six reps per minute all the way down you would jump to seven reps per minute and you would repeat this cycle we have eight variables for minutes and we have eight variables for rate 
or speed. That gives us 64 total workouts on just this one chart, and then you would jump to another chart. Of course, as usual, I want you guys to think that there are more than one of these graphs. We're just putting up one chart because that's the number of whiteboards I have, but there really should be a whiteboard for each weight that you possess. If you have 10 weights, then you would have 10 of these charts. Do you have to do this in a specific order? Not really. You could start going through this chart. As long as you're working your way down each column, then it's fine. You could run this this way and build work on speed first, or you could run down and work on time first. What you're probably gonna do is fill in across. You're gonna do this one, 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 and it should probably fill in your chart on diagonals going this way. And so you should build that thing all the way up and fill in that chart. And then if you're gonna roll this into the idea of heavy light training, you would continue to fill in this chart and then you would have the other chart for the medium weight and the heavy weight. And there would just be more completed workouts on your light chart than on your medium chart than on your heavy chart. When you finish your light chart, your medium chart becomes the new light, your heavy becomes the medium, and you would start a new heavy chart. You do not have to do this all the way straight up in a line. You could jump weights back and forth. You could do 16K, 20K, 24K, and then come back and do 18K, 22K, 26K, and fill it in almost any way you want. That is going to be a, an engineering design choice that you're going to have to make based on the equipment that you have. Now that the Kettlebell Kings Adjustable Competition Kettlebell is available and it's so cheap, you can make a lot of these charts. I think you can make like almost 20 of these charts and just that will fill in a whole section of your programming for months and years to come. That's kind of the point. Kettlebells always have somewhere to go. You can add more complexity, greater speed, more time under tension, or more weight. I'm sure there's other variables that I'm forgetting off the top of my head, but there's always somewhere to go. That's why kettlebells are so valuable. Hard style, soft style programming, weight, speed, time under tension. You can build it up and combine it in an functionally infinite number of ways. The primary point is that soft style guys are focusing on efficiency. They are trying to get efficient. When they're doing long cycle, you have two places you can rest. So you can actually double this chart for each weight. You can rest in the rack position or you can rest in overhead lockout. Once again, one more variable to add in. With snatch, the only place you can rest is at the top. Long cycle, rest in the middle and rest at the top. So general overview, very simple idea, but the programs write themselves. You could start and you could do this five days a week, or you could do this three days a week and jump around between other types of training. That's how people usually do it. Competition guys will have one of these for snatch and one for long cycle and probably one for double long cycle or double jerk, and that they will build up those programs. People like me who are more like a hybrid trainer, somewhere between hard style and soft style, are writing these types of charts based on the desired outcome. Hard style tends to give people more overall athletic benefit in the beginning because they're focusing on six fundamental movements, clean, press, squat, snatch, swing, and Turkish get up. Competition guys tend to be focusing on snatch, long cycle, and jerk. The problem with competition is there's no stepping forward, stepping back, they're not moving their feet, so there's a bit of a training hole there, but you could make up for that training hole by adding in something like single arm heavy club swinging into the program or body flow training. 